Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the distinction between gender and biological sex. On YouTube, I noticed that if you go to the search box and you type in, is gender, you get two autocomplete suggestions. You get, is gender a social construct, and is gender real? And I looked at some of the videos and discussion that was happening, and I see that there are a lot of people that seem to be confounding these two questions in a way that I think is kind of untruthful. People seem to be interpreting the idea of something being a social construct, meaning that it is not real, that the only real things are things that are not social constructs. And this is not at all how I feel about the issue of gender, or of social constructs in general. I think that gender is very real. I think that it is not the same as biological sex. And I think that it is a social construct that is added on top of biological sex, and that kind of references it, and is sometimes tied to it, but not always. So why do I feel this way? Um, first of all, humans are mostly differentiated into these categories of male and female. There are certainly examples of people that don't cleanly fit into those categories, but for the most part, you can look at people's biology and cleanly put them in one category or the other. But when you go through daily life, and you're interacting with people, um, when you're thinking about male or female, when you see a person and you identify them as male or female, you're not necessarily identifying their biological sex accurately. You may be doing so, but you may also be wrong. And there's some basic illustrations of this, but if you want to do this little thought and exercise, think about how as you have less and less information about a person, your ability to infer their biological sex accurately decreases. So an example of this, when I am on the phone with people, I have people refer to me as female much more often than when I'm face to face. And also, when I'm interacting with people on the internet in a setting in which they don't see my face, and they don't see any clearly identifiable gendered information, I have people assume that I am female even more often than that. So, that's just like to illustrate that people are using cues to identify gender. They're not getting an accurate read all the time. There's another level to this, though. People aren't just labeling other people in these gendered categories. They are also uh, acting differently and treating these people differently on the basis of their perceived or labeled gender. And there are some really compelling examples of this that have been studied pretty thoroughly. Um, there have been a lot of studies to assess or measure sexism, and a lot of the, the ways that they'll do this is by having something where there's like a submission process. So it could be a job application, or it could be submissions of articles to a publication. And people will do these controlled experiments where they take the same application, and they change only the person's name, and they'll choose a strongly gendered name. So they'll choose a name that is only ever used for male people, or for female people, and then they'll submit these two batches of applications, and they'll look at the different rates of either offers of an interview, or uh, offers of acceptance to publish an article. And in some contexts, they have found very strong evidence of sexism, that people are reasoning on the basis of these uh, these applicants' gender, and then they are giving preference to one group over the other. But the thing about this is that it's a hypothetical experiment, so there is no biological sex, because there is no actual applicant. It's just made up stuff that's made up by a team of people. So it's living purely in the area of gender. So I think that these these studies don't just show sexism, but they show the very realness of gender, and they show how it is really a social construct, but it is also very real, and it's impacting people's lives in this major way, like it's determining whether or not they get job interviews, or whether or not their works get published. So, I hope that I've illustrated 
this concept to you, this distinction, uh, in a way that is, it, like, to me it seems so common sense that when I think about it that way, I can't deny it at all. That, like, yes, gender is a social construct, we don't observe people's biological sex, we just kind of guess it and then label people in these gender categories as a basis of it. But yes, gender is very real. Um, so anyway, that's what I have to say right now. I'd love to hear from you if you have anything to add, if you have any questions. I'm definitely hoping to talk about this more because I have a whole ton of other things to say. Um, and if you like what I have to say, please share this video because I love it when it can reach more people. Thank you.